Hi, my name is Abby Harris. I am 14 years old and live in New York City. I am a composer who this past year participated in a program called the Luna Composition Lab, where I composed a piano trio called Sheva, which was performed in New York in May, and it was wonderful for me to have heard my composition being played. The Nashville Symphony asked me to speak about Dun Matin de Printemps, a symphonic tone poem by French composer Lely Boulanger. This piece takes us back a century to Paris right after World War I. About Lely, she was born in 1893. She is known as the first woman to win the Prix de Rome, a very famous music composition competition, and she won it when she was only 19, when she was much, much younger than all the other male competitors. Her mother was a Russian countess, and her father a famous composer who himself won the Prix de Rome many years back. She played four instruments and spoke three languages. She was only seven when her father died, and right then she decided to become a composer. Her older sister Nadia, who herself went on to great fame as well, came in second in the Prix de Rome a couple of years before Lily won it. To say she came from a musical family was an understatement. But Lily had a very tragic life. She suffered from Crohn's disease her entire life, and that made her too weak to function much of the time, and her illness led to her premature death at only 23. Dun Matin de Printemps and its sister piece Dun Sor Triste were among the very last things Lily composed before she passed away, and she composed them knowing full well that she was dying. They translate as a spring morning and a sad evening, and they are opposites in mood, with Dun Matin de Printemps sounding radiantly alive and hopeful, and Dun Sor Triste sounding devastatingly sad, mournful, and mysterious. To me, it is like Lily was reducing her experience of this world into two categories, one showing the optimism and wonder of life, and the other showing the tragedy and hopelessness of it. And that is what makes Dun Matin de Printemps so extraordinary to me. What courage it must have taken, she had to have been feeling hopeless and devastated, being told she was dying, but in the face of death, to see the world as a beautiful, positive, and hopeful place, and to describe it in such a delicate and beautiful way. She evokes these emotions by keeping everything crystal clear and light. She scored so many instruments, look at how many musicians are on the stage, but this piece never sounds thick or muffled or heavy. She's using an orchestra, but the sounds are paper thin and light and blend into each other. If you look at the score, it's super dense and there are a lot of notes, and you wouldn't expect to hear the lightness that you do. It was interesting to me how she instructed the orchestra at one point to play fortissimo, super loudly, but she qualified that command by adding, but lightly. And she somehow achieves that sense of airiness despite the strong melodies and loud instruments. I definitely imagine hearing things in it, the rustle of leaves, the fluttering of butterflies' wings, and bouts of otherworldly dreaminess. Listen yourself and see what you can imagine inside of it. There are lively parts as well as quiet parts, but the whole thing coheres and conveys to me inescapably this message of hopefulness and yes, even happiness. Another thing that strikes me about this work is just how modern it sounds. Yes, it was written during the time of Impressionism, and yes, it definitely sounds Impressionistic. But there's also something very modern about it. Through all the positivity, I also hear an echo of hesitation and unease in it. The way the melodies pass back and forth between the instruments, the way she quickly swaps out textures and timbres one to the next, the resonances, overtones, and gorgeous harmonics you hear at the end of it. I learned so much as a composer studying this piece. 